Are you trying to get leaner and hit new PRs in your lifts? Watch this. Our first caller is Helen from Colorado. Helen, what's going on? How can we help you? Hi there, gentlemen. Thank you for taking my question. Um, there was a little bit of background um, in a real fitness and life funk in mid-2019. I joined CrossFit on the premise that all I needed to do was turn up and the coach would make something happen. Uh, and it worked. Uh, one and a half years later, I am in a consistent habit of going to the gym four to five days a week um, and no longer under duress. Uh, during this time, I've been on a journey of discovery for strength, um, and I feel like that's my MO. So in the last year and a half, I've gone from barely knowing what a deadlift is to pulling 300 pounds conventional, and then I squatted to 45 when I last tested my one rep max. Um, and most of those gains have come while I've been in a calorie deficit and while, you know, CrossFit, so strength wasn't the main focus. Um, so realizing CrossFit wasn't the right fit for me, I've now moved to a regular gym so that I can really focus on strength and see what I can make happen. Um, so I'm regularly working out four to five days a week. I'm running a three-day lower body, two-day upper body split. Um, and then in terms of nutrition, um, I'm a wee bit fluffy right now. So I'm on a cut trying to get down about 10 to 15 pounds. Um, I'm on 2,100 calories, getting me about one and one and a half pounds a week. Um, working really well with kind of being flexible and whatever fits my macros. Um, so all going good on that part. My question is in 15 months, I turn 40. Um, with the right training and focus, how far can I take my strength training in that time? Could I hit a 400 pound deadlift in 15 months? And what magic can you guys share to help me go on the right track. Yeah. Okay. So I have no idea if you can hit a 400 pound deadlift. That's more than Justin, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but, but, but no, I, I I have no idea if that's where you can go. Um, I'm sure there's some potential left there, especially because you trained so long with CrossFit, which isn't exactly the best type of programming for pure strength. You're saying you're doing upper and lower body days. Powerlifting or strength training tends to focus on lifts, not necessarily body parts. Um, so if, if you're number one, and then you said you want to get leaner, so we got to pick one right now. Yeah. What's more important to you right now, getting leaner or getting stronger? Uh, probably leaner first, um, only cause I'm not really in a position that I want to do maintenance or bulking calories till I've addressed that, um, okay. realistic drop 10 pounds in like, I don't know, six, eight weeks. Okay. So it's I'd focus that on that first. So go ahead and get leaner and, you know, Still focus on strength, but don't expect huge strength gains. Not in a deficit. Not in a deficit. When you're done with getting lean, then I would go in a surplus and I would follow a powerlifting specific yeah, maps powerlift. type program. I was mm -hmm. just going to ask, do you have MAPS Powerlift, Helen? I don't. All right, we'll send that over to you. Follow MAPS Powerlift in a surplus when you're done with your cut. Um, and you should see some pretty significant progress and changes. Now, I will say this. Your lifts are pretty damn strong now. Yeah. So adding a hundred pounds to your deadlift is—I don't know—that's you're, you're looking at you know a third uh, increase. You know, adding an additional third to the total weight that you lift. Yeah, that would be impressive for somebody who's uh, never deadlifted and then begins deadlifting. That would still be impressive. Somebody who has been training CrossFit and deadlifting for years now. Uh, Adding a hundred pounds is yeah. now that doesn't mean it's not possible. No, no, it's especially I mean, with a targeted powerlifting routine because you know there's muscle that's gained, but but a good powerlifting routine is really good at technique, getting yeah. you good at the lift, and and strength is as much of a skill as it is just muscle. So, I I that would be the best direction to go. I would say, Helen, do you practice uh, mobility uh, quite frequently? Do you have a ritual around that? Um, I guess, what, what do you mean by mobility? What I mean by that is, um, you know, if you're constantly kind of checking in on your joint health and stability and, and support, uh, so to go through like some of these, uh, mobility type stretches and things like, you know, post or even priming before your workouts, uh, can make a substantial difference. Also when you're on, you're on the, this, you know, aggressive pursuit of strength, uh, you know, the last thing we want to do is to, um, you know, get, get, uh, you know, a, a bad response out of your joints. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know we're not the biggest CrossFit fans, but I feel like that's one thing I really have taken away is, is I do really good priming. Um, I've had really good, I feel like I've had really good coaching in terms of technique. And more importantly, I've kind of been very in tune with if I'm not, if I'm not feeling it, like if occasionally I'll get a tight right hip, I 
back it off and I focus on that before I, you know, put the weights back on again. Um, and I good. feel like that's a good starting point. Um, that I'm whilst I say I'm being aggressive, I'm also being very smart about it. And then obviously listening to you guys, there's no point lifting if it's not good technique and yeah, good mobility. Awesome. No, you're on, you're on the right track. But yeah, the, the biggest thing I'd say is uh, when you're trying to cut, uh, don't expect your strength to to explode. So it's going to be with a surplus, with a calorie surplus. So I'd go ahead and cut first. There's nothing wrong with that. And then go yeah. into the surplus and then chase the strength and then follow MAPS power lift. And that'll be the best. That'll be your best uh, chance. It'll actually, yeah, involved. it'll set you up really nice. I actually think that would be a, a nice little cut to lean out in a deficit, and then the surplus with the changing of the programming. Yep. Like if you're if you were doing more of a kind of body part focused program, and then you move specifically to a, a strength based program like power lift, which is the the main lifts. Uh, and you're also moving back from a deficit now into a calorie surplus. I mean, I, I think that's going to set the table for some PRs for you for sure. Um, I think 400 is a very lofty goal, but hey, why not set it at 400 and, and, you know, we'll be happy if we hit 350, you know, I like it. And the number for me is pretty, arb well, it's arbitrary. It'd be nice to hit, but it's more about the process and what could I really get in that time i don't know if i'll ever get there but it's 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 fun to dream yeah, are, are, you, uh, are you conventional or sumo lifter conventional conventional, oh, conventional. conventional. None, none of the sumo crap <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't count if it's sumo <laughs> i tell i tell that to lane norton all the time <laughs> yeah. awesome well no thanks for calling in helen i think you know the advice we gave you give give that a shot i think that's your best bet awesome thank you so much thank you helen cheers thank you yeah, I think one of the takeaways here is the conflicting goals that people tend to have. Yes. Uh, I want to build the most amount of muscle, but I'm trying to get shredded. Don't be shredded. Or, yeah. you know, I want yeah. to be able to run a marathon in, you know, under two hours, but I also want to be able to, you know, squat three times my body weight or whatever. So <sighs> competing goals, you're better off going after one, unless your goal is to kind of be okay at everything. But if you want to do really good at one thing, focus on that one thing. And then when you're ready to move out, move out. And focus on something else. You're you're, you're going to be you're going to be better off doing it that way that, rather than trying to do everything all at once. Because peeing in a deficit and trying to add a hundred pounds to your deadlift after already getting up to a pretty damn good deadlift, um, I mean that's going to be a really really hard thing to do. Yeah, a, a three hundred pound deadlift is a very impressive deadlift already. Mm -hmm. So yeah. a 30, 39 year old woman, that's yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, no, I mean honestly, I would be super happy if we added twenty five pounds to that in the year. I mean mm -hmm. twenty five pounds to a three hundred pound, point, right? yeah. So <laughs> four hundred, but I like it. You know, seven. you never know though, dude. I swear, um, I've worked with people where they were pretty damn strong, but they never did a targeted powerlifting program, right? And then they saw huge. Well, I saw. Gains. I mean, when we ran, dude, I ran our pounds. Yeah, I mean, um, Mass Powerlift was my last like maps program that I I, I I ran and was consistent with sticking to the program. Um, and because I, I had and why I was so excited about that when we did that, I have ever I've never ran like a pure powerlifting program, and I saw a big difference from that. So I, I packed on some um, some muscle and, and got strong. And a lot of that I think is um, just the practicing of the technique. Mm -hmm. of it's it skill. more than anything else yeah. like i i don't think i was built the most i definitely wasn't the most muscular i was i've been more muscular in the past it's just that i don't think i'd ever followed a program where the the desired outcome was just purely to get stronger in those four lifts and i'm just going to get better and better mm -hmm. and better and it's it's programmed very well hey if you enjoyed that clip you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe